In this video, we'll talk about convexity and some other related theorems. To begin with, we'll look at affine combinations, linear combinations, and convex combinations. These concepts are described much better in the book, so I would really recommend you to take a look at the book, especially the first chapter. Um, here I'll just give you a brief summary of these concepts. So given a number of vectors, like n vectors in d-dimensional space, a linear combination of them is uh, in this form, where ai's are real numbers. For example, if we have three vectors in the plane, then every point in the plane can be written as a linear combination of these three vectors. In fact, if we remove one of them, can I still write every point in the plane as a linear combination of these two ve uh, vectors? If you have this picture, though, the only points of the plane where you can write them as a linear combination of these two vectors are the points on the line. A fine combination is very similar to a linear combination, except that we have this additional restriction where the coefficients must sum up to 1. If you have only one vector or one point, there is only one affine combination. If n is equals 1, then we have to pick a1 equals 1, so the fine combination of one vector is itself. If you have two vectors, then the fine combination is a line that passes through those two vectors, or two points. For example, the picture, if you have three vectors as shown in the picture, then the fine combination will be the whole plane again. And you can write every point in the plane as a fine combination of these three vectors. And finally, convex combination is very similar to fine combination, except that we require uh, these coefficients to be positive. If you have a number of points in d-dimensional space, the convex combination of them will create the convex hull of these uh, the set of points. Any point inside a convex hull can be written as a convex combination of the vectors. Um, I will not prove this, but uh, to see some examples, consider two vectors, v1 and v2. The midpoint of the line segments connecting v1 to v2 can be written as half v1 plus half v2. Or in other words, this point is the average between v1 and v2. If you cut this line segment into three pieces, three equal pieces. This point can be written as two-thirds of v1 plus one-third of v2. And in particular, we can write any point on this line segment as a convex combination of v1 and v2. Uh, and an extreme case is when you want to write v1, which can be written as 1 times v1 plus z times v2. So there are two ways to define convex shapes. One is to say that a convex shape is a set of all the points that are the convex combination of a number of vectors. Another way is to say that a convex shape is a shape where there are no holes in it. In other words, given any two points in the shape, the line segment connecting those two points should be inside a convex uh, shape. And using this observation, it's relatively easy to prove that these two definitions of a convex object are the same. Now let's look at some properties of a convex object. Imagine you have two convex objects, a blue one and a red one. Um, you can easily see that the intersection of them is also a convex object. To prove that, it's really simple. Consider two points inside the intersection. We're going to go for the, with the other definition, that we to prove the convexity of the purple area, we have to prove that the line segments that connect these two points uh, is inside a purple area. The proof is relatively straightforward. We know that the, these two points are inside a red polygon, or red convex object, so therefore the the line segment is inside a red object. Similar argument shows that the line segment is inside the blue object, so therefore the line segment is inside the purple object too. The next theorem says if you have two convex objects that are not intersecting, that they're disjoint, then there is a hyperplane that separates them. The proof goes like this. Um, there is, since these two convex objects are, not, are disjoint, they have a minimum distance. So connect two points that create the minimum distance, and any hyperplane perpendicular to that line segment will create the separating hyperplane. Finally, we look at three important theorems in this area. The first one is Radon's theorem, which says if you have a set of d plus 1, 2 points in d-dimensional space, then you can partition them into two sets such that their convex hulls are intersecting. In the plane, this theorem holds for four points. So d plus 2 is 4 in, in two-dimensional space. For example, you have the following shape, 
then you can partition these two uh, into these two sets. And as you can see, the convex hulls have a common point. I will not prove this theorem. The next important theorem is Cauchy Theodore's theorem, which says if you have a point that is inside the convex hull of a set of points, then you can write this point as a convex combination of only d plus 1 points of x. For example, in the plane, what it means is that you can find a triangle that contains this point, and since this blue point is inside the triangle, it can be written as a convex combination of its vertices. And finally, we get to Halley's theorem. Halley's theorem is the following. Imagine you have a set of, uh, you have n convex sets in d-dimensional space. And furthermore, they have the property that every d plus 1 convex shapes have a common point, in other words, they intersect. For example, you have these convex shapes in the plane. If you pick any three of them, then there is a point that is inside all three uh, chosen convex shapes, shapes. If this is true, then all of the shapes have a common uh, intersection. In particular, this red area is the area that is inside all of them. Let's look at one quick proof. Uh, we'll use induction. First, the proof is trivial if n is smaller than d plus 1 because uh, it directly follows from the assumption. So let's assume n is bigger than d plus 2. We define the points pi in the following way. Um, we, we assume that the theorem holds for n minus 1. So take out set ci and let pi be the common point of all the remaining convex shapes. Using the induction assumption, all the n minus 1 objects left by removing ci have a common point. And let name, let's name that common point pi. We look at the first d plus 2 common points. So P1 is a common point to all of the objects, object shape, except P, C1. This is inside all of them except C2. This is inside all of them except C3, and so on. Using Radon's theorem, we can decompose this into two subsets, such that their convex hulls intersect. So this line segment, for example, is guaranteed to be inside all of the sets except possibly for P2 or possibly for P3. However, if you look at the intersection of these two convex um, objects, this is inside the convex hull of these uh, point sets. So it means that it has to be inside the convex hull of all of them except these sets. And it's also inside the uh, convex hull of these two points which means it has to be the inside the convex hull of all of them, except possibly for these two points. But it's since it since lies on the intersection of both, it follows at this point, it's inside the convex hull of all of them. And that concludes Hedley's theorem.